This week's episode of the And She Looked Up podcast is brought to you by Fine Lime Illustrations. If you love quirky, colorful art transformed into fun, handmade stationery items, pretty much guaranteed to brighten somebody's day, that's just what you'll find in my new online shop at finelimeillustrations.com. That's fine, as in I'm fine, lime as in the fruit, illustrations.com. Browse the entire collection or sign up for my email list to see some behind the scenes peeks into my studio. You'll also get first notice of new product launches and subscriber only sales. And as an added little bonus, you'll also receive a free coloring sheet to help you relax and de-stress from your day. And now on with the show. Welcome to the And She Looked Up podcast. Each week, we sit down with inspiring Canadian women who create for a living. We talk about their creative journeys and their best business tips, as well as the creative and business mindset issues all creative entrepreneurs struggle with. I'm your host, Melissa Hartfield, and after leaving a 20-year career in corporate retail, I've been happily self-employed for 12 years. I'm a graphic designer, an illustrator, and a multi-six-figure-a-year entrepreneur in the digital content space. This podcast is for the artists, the makers, and the creatives who want to find a way to make a living doing what they love. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the And She Looked Up podcast. I'm Melissa, and... I'm here today with my semi-regular guest host, Heather Travis. And Hi, Heather, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Happy New Year, if it's not Happy too- New Year, Did yes. I to say that? I don't know. Um, but it's your first appearance on the show for 2024, so Happy New Year. Exactly. <laughs> so today, Heather and I are, we're going to be talking a little bit of a mixed bag, I guess, Um We normally do an end of year episode where we talk a bit about how our year went and what our goals are for the coming year. And we decided to scrap it for 2023 because um, we just weren't sure if people were into those episodes. But then we heard from a few people that, uh, yeah, they did want to hear how our 2023s went. And and more, I think more, they were more curious in what we had um, planned for the coming year. And so I feel like, People either love those episodes or they don't. I mean, I love them. I am such a nosy Parker. I love to hear what other people have planned. I learn a lot from that. I get ideas from mm-hmm. it. So I like those episodes, but I know some people are just like, yeah, I, I don't really care. <laughs> so if you don't really care, uh, well, you can tune up for- next week. <laughs> you, yeah, you, you can come back. But we're also going to be talking as part of this episode um, about some of the trends that we see happening in 2024. And- whether or not we're going to participate in those trends um, or whether we're planning on incorporating them some way into what we are doing this year. So if you're interested in the trends for the coming year or what we think, (laughs) our personal opinions of what we think the trends for the year will be, uh, then yeah, stick around. So, um, you know, stay, go. It's it's (laughs) up to you. Yes. (laughs) Uh, Okay. So yeah, let's... uh, Heather, super quick. How did 2023 go for you? Were you were you happy? What what did you learn? What did you what did you what made you unhappy? Cole's notes. <laughs> Cole's notes. So 2023 was an absolutely crazy year because it started, well, it started actually with our dog dying. So that was like we've t- we Melissa and I have talked about 2023. And yeah. So uh, uh we both that we was both a pretty lost our pups this year yeah, in 2023. Yeah. So yeah. Yes. Uh, so that was a super shitty start to the year. Um, mm-hmm. But then, gosh, you know, I finished up um, the production of the works for the exhi- exhibition. I then launched the exhibition, had the entire exhibition, had the, all the events associated with the exhibition, and then wrapped up the exhibition at the end, right at the end of 2023. And it was an overall, I would say 2023 was an incredible year despite the shitty start, uh, because I learned a lot about art, the art world, having an exhibit, Mm. um, dealing with the gallery, meeting new customers, in-person events, um, 
you know, when I started a new contract job uh, to fill up the piggy bank after painting for a year and a half. Uh, so it was a really, honestly, I think 2023 was a huge year of growth. It was a huge year of uh, cathartic release. I think uh, we've talked about it, that the mm -hmm. exhibition and the creation process was really cathartic for me and being able to release parts of myself into these paintings and sort of leave them in the world um, and not carry that weight myself anymore uh, has been incredibly, incredibly fulfilling, gratifying, relieving. Like I feel there's so much opportunity and that, you know, that that's why my plans for 2024 are kind of interesting um, because I did, I think I did so much in 2023 and I also learned so much and experienced so much. I feel like there's so much more potential now. Yeah. 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 That was a huge year for you. So mm -hmm. um, definitely yeah. um, a lot of emotions wrapped up in there oh, too. <laughs> right. Exactly. And you know, I mean, you know, just as well as I do that having, when you're at home in your studio with your companion, uh, when they're no longer there, it is a huge change to, to the work flow and process mm. and your day. And so like new routines, new habits. I know you've posted about it on your Instagram in terms of like grief routines and all of like all of those things. Like the first time I found an Eddie hair in one of the paintings that I was working on for the exhibition, I was just shattered up here in the studio, like it shattered. So it really changed things, but I'll tell you, it was a huge opportunity too. It was a huge opportunity and the gift that his absence actually gave me in terms of time. Um, you know, I had to really focus on the the positives that that, mm -hmm. that allowed. Um, and so it was a really, yeah, it was a really, 2023 was like the, the awesomest shitty year, if that makes sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, it does. I find, I find momentous years are often like that. It's yeah. a mix of great loss, but also of great gain. Um, yes. And, and great growth and, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I've, I've noticed that throughout my my life that yeah, usually the really crappy years are also the really best years. It's it's yeah. funny how that works. Yeah, and yeah. you know what's interesting? You and I have talked about the waves of creativity mm -hmm. before, but I also feel like that that's it's the waves. Like in order to experience that really high high yeah. of the awesomeness, you have to go. Like there has to be <laughs> you have An to go low. Yeah, 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 yeah. It it otherwise there's no wave. It's flat, right? It, yes. If you don't have a high exactly. or a low, it's just a straight line. <laughs> yeah. And Monotone, which is yeah, so, very, so not interesting. Very boring. Exactly. Very exactly. Boring. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what about you for 2023? Yeah. So just before we get into that, if you want to oh, hear sorry. about um about Heather's exhibit and and everything that went into it and a lot of the um the emotions and things that were behind the exhibit. Uh, <laughs> our season opener for season five is with Heather and we talked in great depth about the exhibit. I'll put a link to it in the show notes, but if you want to go back and listen to that, if you missed it, um, she, we, we, we get into all the juicy stuff behind launching yes. a solo exhibition. <laughs> um, yeah. 2023 was um, uh, yeah, a funny year, I think. Um yeah. Yeah, I, I I lost my pup. For those of you who are, I haven't talked about it too much on the podcast, but for those of you who don't know, he he was five months old when I uh, quit my real job. So he has been with me in my studio uh, for almost fourteen and a half years, and it's um, well almost fourteen because yeah, I just so mm -hmm. I just celebrated my fourteenth anniversary of being self employed. Wow! <laughs> oh, like last that's like a huge week. accomplishment. Yeah, Can we dwell last, on that for a second. That's a huge. I, accomplishment. I think it was last Friday. It was the eighteenth, which was last Thursday. Wow! Uh, today's Thursday. Yeah, we're recording no this idea. on January twenty fifth. It is a Thursday, <laughs> so um, <laughs> yeah, it was the eighteenth, and so um, you know, but but he's I, and I never really understood people saying how they uh, find working from home lonely. I never found it lonely with him him here but now that he's not here it is so weird um his yes. bed is still in the studio because I don't like the empty floor space even though I know he's yes. not in it I don't like the yep. empty floor space it, it yep. bothers me way more than I can, mm -hmm. can can explain to anything it's such an irrational thing but um yeah my it, feet are currently sitting in Eddie's bed underneath my desk yeah and he's been, and he's so, been gone for a year so it's so funny <laughs> they're keeping my feet warm <laughs> that um but 
Um, you know, Sam was diagnosed with cancer in May and he had a successful surgery, but the oncologist was very upfront and said, uh, it, it will be back. Um, his mm. blood work showed that it had probably already started to spread, even though we couldn't find any signs of it. Um, and she gave him six to eight months, which is pretty much exactly what we got. But I was fortunate enough to, to know that in advance, like looking back on it, I realized how fortunate I was and and mm. how being self-employed allowed me to change my priorities for the last yes. six months of his life. And I was able yes. to um, spend much more intentional time with him and make sure yes. that they were a great six months. I'm going to start crying. Yes. So I'm no, no, I'm, I'm already <laughs> tearing. I'm already tearing because I'm totally with you. And that's such a, that we were just it was talking a gift. the other day. It's a, it's a huge gift and that you cannot put a dollar value. Like when people say, oh, you're self-employed, how much money do you make? Mm. That you could not, you, that the experience that you had that six, six months, that's like a million dollar experience. Like there are people that would mm -hmm. trade and give limbs for the experience of caring for the family member. Like you, that's such yeah. a gift. And it, there is no finance that you could put on that. Exactly. It could have been one yeah. of my parents. It could have been a friend, yep. you know, to yep. be able to, to be there for a friend who's going through yes. something. Um, so that's something I could not have had if I was in a traditional job. Yep. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. And and that kind of leads to, um, I actually had a, a, a good, a, like, I don't, I want to say I had a great year, but I had a, a good year. I'm not disappointed in my year. And this was the second full-time year of the the current businesses that I have. I had done mm -hmm. some part-time work the, a few years before that, but um, so I am still very much in the early growth stages. I have two arms to my business and each year I've had a big revenue leap. And my, my goal this year was also another um, fairly aggressive increase in revenue percentage wise, it's still nowhere near where I need to be financially. But um, I, when I did my numbers at the end of the year, I was $600 short of my goal for the year. I was so upset. Hey. <laughs> like on the one hand, I'm just like, wow, that was, cause it was a very aggressive goal. So yay me. Yeah. Um, yes. But, but here's why I was frustrated. I was frustrated because, and it has like, somebody actually thought I was frustrated because I had slowed down because of Sam. No, absolutely not. Like that was a very, um, intentional choice. And I'm, yep. I'm yes. glad I was in the, I was frustrated yes. because I did not go through my numbers at the end of November. I was busy. It was market season. Sam had been sick. He'd passed away. My dad had had some health stuff. And I was just like, Ugh, you know, I'll, I'll just do it at the end of December. So I didn't know my numbers. I didn't know where I was at. And if I had just sat down for half an hour and done my numbers, I would have known how close I was. And I would have been, I could have filled that $600. I had, I turned down two client requests because I was just, I just wanted a break, but honestly, if I had known how close I was, I would have, I would have taken them and I would have been over yeah. the $600 and I would have hit the target. So this is why numbers are so important and why paying attention to your numbers are so important. I mean, at the end of the day, $600 is not a deal breaker or anything, but it, it was annoying to me that the reason I didn't hit this goal is because I wasn't paying attention to my numbers. And, and mm -hmm. sometimes it's those very small things. It's not that we you know, if you miss them for one month, big deal. But if you miss them for three or four months, they add up and things start to go in the wrong oh. direction. So if you catch yes. them quickly, you can course correct. And that's what I could have done. So um, mm -hmm. that was my big list lesson for 2023. You pay attention to your numbers. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, you know, I really set two big goals for the year. One was visibility and one was creating. And I had initially planned to do 365 days of creating new things. I tapped out around day 210, I think, or 218 or somewhere in there. Um, Cause I was just, that's impressive. You got that far. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah. It burnt yeah. me out. I could, by the time I got to that, I was like, I don't care <laughs> if I ever pick up another pen or pencil or a piece of paper or my iPad. Um, but I created a huge, body of work and a lot of work that is helping me to be ahead of things promotion wise for 2024. I have artwork created. Um, 
So I'm really pleased with how I did. I will never do another 365 challenge again. I will do a much <laughs> more <laughs> reasonable, yeah, reasonable, forgiving type of challenge. 100 days is great. Um, or doing 52 weeks or something like that. Yeah. 360 yeah. days was was crazy. And I don't think I missed a day in the 210 that I did, or I might have missed one or two, but it was it was very consistent. So yeah. So that wow. is um yeah, that's that's 2023 in a in a nutshell for me. <laughs> so uh yeah, so that brings us to this year. So so I just for an FYI for the audience, Heather and I did not discuss this before coming on this. So I have no idea what she is doing for this year. She has no idea what I'm doing. So, so uh, Heather, enlighten us all. What's happening? What's happening this year? Yeah. So this year is really interesting because I, I, so first off the, de- the amount of time that I was able to spend creating for the exhibition, it was such a dedicated, like I literally spent 60 hours a week for like eight months, nine months working on art for this exhibition. Mm-hmm. I tried new techniques. I tried new paints. I experimented a lot. All of that was incredibly gratifying. I kind of feel like when the exhibition happened, I didn't create actually anything for quite a few months, yeah. like on purpose. So I still did, you know, I, anybody who follows me on Instagram knows that I dick around the house and do stuff with spray paint. And like, I, I'm always making creative, like there's never not a creative, but I no didn't. No intentional part. No intentional yeah. and no sitting down. I am going to paint. Uh, that did not happen. And I, I kind of enjoyed that. I enjoyed that I re- released myself from the sort of freedom. Mm-hmm. And, and then in thinking about that and actually really dwelling on the fact that I really enjoyed the experimentation that I allowed myself to do during the exhibition creation period that I actually, 2024 for me is going to be all about experimenting. Mm. And so my financial goals are actually to just make experimentation as inexpensive as possible (laughs) so that I don't go into the hole. Um, But using things that I have here, things that I might find, I'm really, so it, I, I want to experiment with different styles. I want to experiment with different techniques. I want to experiment with uh, subject matter. There's a lot that I, and so ex- if I was picking like my word of 2024, it would be experimentation. And and if I was adding, if I was adding a word before that, it would be limitless experimentation. Mm. I don't want to limit myself by saying that's not on brand. I don't want to limit myself by saying, what will people think? I don't want to limit myself by how much it might get. Uh, You know, I don't want to limit that experimentation. And and so I really, and even financially, like, it's not like I'm going to go out and just whatever, but like I've been researching airbrushes and like maybe playing with painting with airbrush tools and what does that look like and how, you know, So financially, that's a big one, but it's also, I also am really interested in that experimentation. One thing that I've never, I mean, I'm a, I'm not an only child, but I'm really an only child. (laughs) Uh, I'm an Aries and uh, I'm a child of divorce. And so my like, I don't need your help. I can do it all by myself is uh, brewed and baked into my core. Right. And so part of that experimentation that I want to look at for this year is more collaboration. And for me, collaboration immediately, like, oh, it's like high school projects all over again, where I do all the work (laughs) and everybody else is like, thanks so much. That's great, Heather. Um, You know, we'll see you in class. Uh, And I, so I really I want to be a little bit more into obviously intentional about who I collaborate with, not just like willy nilly, but I also want that experimentation through collaboration. I don't want it to be a surefire thing, you know? Um, So like, for instance, I've been talking to a girlfriend of mine about creating a line of tarot cards for her studio. And like, I've never designed tarot cards before, but how fun would that be? And so it's like experimentation. How cool would that be? And just at playing, I think. And, and I would actually argue that my experimentation, I chose that over play because that seemed 
it's a little frivolous, but I would argue that I want my experimentation to be quite a lot of play as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have no idea what I'm going to create. I have no, I have a couple ideas on series that I want to paint, mm. but again, if it comes, it comes. I'm I, like, I have so many ideas mm -hmm. actually, which is kind of exciting. And I'm not, and I'm not going to say, okay, well, if I did this, then I could sell it. Or if I did this, like my decisions are not going to be made. It sounds so weird. Cause you and I always talk about business, but I don't think any of my artistic decisions this year are going to be business-based. They're going to be purely uh, learning, soul-filling, spreading my wings, and just like there's going to be a lot of throwing spaghetti against the wall. Mm -hmm. And 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 I'm okay. And I'm okay with that. And I think part of the comfort of that is that I still have that contract job. Um, I was just going to ask, like, do you feel like the contract job is giving you the freedom? to be able to experiment without necessarily worrying too much about, because I think for a lot of us, uh, we, we're, we got to eat, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so there's always that in the back of our mind, like, is this going to be commercially viable? Um, which yeah. maybe holds us back a bit from, from going down a path we might really want to go down. So do you feel like mm -hmm. having that contract job is sort of giving you a little bit of a cushion so that you can make that happen? Big, big time. I would yeah. say it's, it's giving a lot of opportunity, but it also, um, you know, it is demanding. So it's, uh, you, you know, I'd have half as much time in my studio as, as I would if I was just home. Um, but I also have money to pay for food. So, you know, <laughs> win some, lose some. <laughs> yeah. And so, yes, I, and I think also too, you know, it's interesting being home alone, talking to the dog, uh, is, is a huge gift, but you also not being out in the world. Like I'm a really social being. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I take a lot from being out in the world and I didn't actually realize how much I missed it until I got back into yeah. the world. I think that's something within a... <laughs> Our pets age so, um, like, it's not something you just notice that mm -hmm. that they're aging, right? And so I think the last few years of their lives, we do, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, just retreat a little bit so that because yep. they, they can't be as active. So we... Yes, we I made categoric to say, like, nope, exactly. we can't go there. I'm not leaving the dog. Like, yeah, I'm stuff. not going on vacation unless he comes with me nope. or I'm not, you know, Correct. I don't want to. Yeah. So I definitely did that. But after he passed away, I was going through a lot of pictures and videos and stuff. And, you know, the first 10 years, Sam was 14 and a half when he passed away. So he was, he was a good old age for a Labrador. He's a big dog. Oh. Labs are big dogs. So they have a shorter lifespan. But, um, you know, the first 10 years of his life, were so different from the last four and a half. He was, we were so yes. active. I had no problem leaving him. I mean, I missed him for sure, but he came yep. with me on all the adventures. Like I was out there a lot more than I was the last few years um, because yes. he was in a different point in his life. So I kind of remind myself, like if I was to get another dog, we'd be back at the puppy stage and we'd be, we'd be active again. We'd be out there, we'd be doing stuff. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I do, there is something nice about having this little break where, yeah, I can, yeah. I can go out without having to worry quite so much, or I, I yeah. yeah, yeah, so yes. it is like it, it's a gift, and it's a gift, like mm -hmm. both are gifts, right? And so you yeah. just, it's, it's, it's the choice in your attitude, obviously, is a yeah. big thing, but like I, it, exactly. And because even when Eddie was fit as a fiddle and we did all the things, you know, we would go for like three hour long hikes, but I'd go with girlfriends and their kids and other dogs, yeah. and like, yeah, yeah, so there was social. Whereas when we just, you know, we're lucky to make it around the block. I mm -hmm. saw the same, I saw the same two neighbors, right? And it's, it takes you an hour. <laughs> and it took us an hour and, and exactly. And I wouldn't go, I wouldn't leave the house for a four hour hike because that was leaving him. And so yeah. all of those things, it, it, exactly. And so being out with people is really like, it's filling my cup up. I'm meeting new people, different mm -hmm. people. I feel like um, some of my perspectives have been challenged. You know, I'm working in a, uh, the services sector that is supporting people who live with developmental disability. I've met a huge, huge, huge number of people who live very interesting and uh, beautiful lives. And it's really 
I, I kind of feel like the Grinch. My heart has grown two sizes bigger. <laughs> and I just feel like I just feel more um, connected to my community. I think where the collaboration aspect comes from mm -hmm. is I'd like to do more within my community. And like that, you know, just to sort of veer onto what we were hoping to talk about as well is I see a big trend for 2024 being continued emphasis on local and community connection. And I, as an artist, want to embrace that more within my work, my sales. So like even this weekend, I'm hosting a studio open house. I'm putting a sign at the end of my driveway mm -hmm. and encouraging people to come into my studio. And so my neighbors are going to see this, right? And mm -hmm. so like I'm inviting the community in quite literally. And, yeah. and, and that's an experiment. Who knows how it's going to go, but I have this fancy <laughs> little thing now, Melissa, where I can take credit card payments in person. And so I feel yeah, all like looks fancy like pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway. So yeah, it's going to be, I think 2024 is going to be a really interesting year of throwing spaghetti, throwing paint around, uh, and really just challenging myself to, tr to try. Mm -hmm. I think that's, Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's funny because like I said, we hadn't heard what each other's goals were, but it's uh, pretty weird how uh, aligned they are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Collaboration was number two on my list for this year. Yep. Um, I, I think that's going to be huge. I, I, and again, like you, I'm not sure what that's going to look like or who it's mm -hmm. going to be with or, or, but basically I'm, I am very open to it. Like, yeah, I'm just yep. going to let myself be open to yes to seeing what comes along and um and if there's somebody that I want to work with, I'm I'm gonna you know push myself outside of my comfort zone and mm -hmm. see if they'd be interested in. And one of like I was I was I, I was actually out with a girlfriend yesterday. We went thrifting. Um, I took a a rare Wednesday fun. off. It was fun. We had a great time. And uh, she's a she's a she's a blogger. Well, she doesn't really blog anymore. She still has her blog, but I, mm. yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> but we were just, we were just talking about all of this. And I was just saying like, I feel like this is the year where I'm just gonna be open and experiment with yeah. things. And, and one of the things I, I was thinking about inviting, like who I want to invite on the show for the rest of the season. Um, and I was saying how I was really nervous about approaching some of these people. And one of them is actually somebody that her and I both know and who has dramatically changed her life in the last couple of years um, oh. in the terms of what she does now. And I said, I'm really nervous about asking her to be on the show. And she was like, why you like, we know her. She's nice. She's. And I said, I, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's because she's doing something so incredibly different now. Um, and yet at the same time, like, it's so funny how, anyways. Um, so yeah, I want, to, I, I, I want to experiment with who I bring on the show. And I, um, yeah, so experimentation and collaboration are are both very high on my list this year. Um, my word for last year was visibility because because I'm such it's such an early stage. I still really struggle with getting eyeballs on me, and I'm actually carrying that word over for 2024. Yeah. I'm still going to be working very much on visibility. Um, I saw the re the results of a very concentrated effort on that for 2023. The, the results for that started to roll in around October of last year. Like, and right. so I just, I want to put that out there for everybody who's, who, who struggles. Like, I think we all struggle with visibility um, mm -hmm. and we get very frustrated with social media for not making our visibility better. But mm -hmm. um, I think it, it really is true that you have to show up every day and it, yeah. And, and not just on social media, like the, the, the way that visibility started to snowball for me was actually through my services newsletter, which I found mm. out people were sharing because it had good stuff in it. And Amazing. SEO I had for the first time in September, I had somebody approach me and say, I found you through a search online for my services. I have a very niche service, like, like the people that I 
um, mm -hmm. work with is very niche. Um, and so that told me my SEO was working, something that I had done a very concentrated effort on for, for eight months. So yeah, I think um, it's so much more than social media getting seen. And mm -hmm. I think I mm -hmm. still have a ton of work to do in that area. And so I'm very much uh, still planning on doing that for this year. Just before we came on the show, um, I was working on a newsletter that I'm sending out this afternoon because Inco Rimo starts in February and I'm, I am, uh, going to participate in that as a way to grow my community because I think commu right. community yep. is kind of part of collaboration to me, mm -hmm. like in a way, because yes. you're, you're collaborating with the people who love your stuff. Right. Yes. Um, and community, yes, massive. I, I mean, you've known me for a long time. I preach community nonstop. Mm -hmm. I've been, pre it's been, yeah. to me, it's a trend that has been going on for years. Like it's not even a yes. trend it is just a thing that you should be doing in your business, regardless of Fact. whatever. Yes. Um, yes. and I'm, I am a huge proponent of community and I am absolutely, uh, f focusing in on that. But I think more and more people have realized that this year community, um, is definitely something they need to pay attention to. So yeah, visibility is a big one. And, um, yeah, I, I am. I I am also very focused on revenue because I I amassed a bunch of debt, person like uh, consumer debt last year because of dental <laughs> mishaps. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I almost cried yesterday because I'm finally getting my crown put on um, to finish off this entire. I've had three surgeries. I have one tiny one uh, left to do in. February and uh, then I get my crown put on and uh, mm -hmm. you guys, you guys extended dental is such BS when you don't have a corporate job. Like it covers right? nothing, nothing. <laughs> like, so, so it's all out of pocket and, um, and yeah, so this year is about, I'm hoping to hit like a, a, a respectable revenue this year that is um, life supporting. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that can hopefully uh, help me chip away at this debt. Uh, Cause I just, I hate carrying any kind of debt, especially mm. when I'm self-employed. Mm. So yeah, those are my big things this year. And uh, you know, we were talking about um, trends and um, where we see those going and, and how we're going to get involved in them. And the one we've both mentioned is community. So okay. Yeah, like I just said, I don't think it's a trend personally, but I know it is a trend that has been identified by a lot of people this year. But um, yeah, so, so yeah, like where do you see community in your world this year? You know, for me, I see community and like community to me is like authenticity in that people, they're like buzzwords. It's all about community. It's mm -hmm. all about authenticity, but quite Truly, if you do not live and breathe those, doesn't really matter. And and for me, community, particularly via social media, is my sh my shirt community. Mm -hmm. the sh The shirt with Heather community that comes together every odd Saturday to shirt with me <laughs> is such a beautiful group of humans, and it continues to grow. We just celebrated our third shard anniversary, so three years of sharding. Uh and you, you know you did a radio not... spot for, on CBC for it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I got interviewed on CBC. I was on um like the Toronto Morning mm -hmm. Radio. Yeah, yeah. We talked for like 10 minutes. And what was interesting was um one of the producers when she called me, she was like, I follow you on Instagram. I have for years. And then she was asking oh, cool. about the background of Shart and just this ties to community actually quite interestingly is when I took a break from sh sharding live over the summer so that I could just have my summer to go out and be in the world, uh, I switched to doing reels as a shirt prompt. And so my shirt prompts were as reels. I could create them anytime I wanted over the course of the week, published them on Saturday. And they were getting like 10,000, 20,000 views. So I was getting like that shirt was actually going a lot farther then when I went live and when I decided to go back to going live, I basically sacrificed that 20,000 viewership on every potential reel to having 20 to 30 people show up. And so it's a drastic number in difference, 
But to me, that community is actually more powerful. It's mightier, stronger, or it's stronger and mightier, smaller. And like, I have more meaningful connection, more authentic Mm -hmm. connection, as opposed to me coming up into my studio, recording a fun reel, publishing it, pushing it out into the world and having a few people comment, a couple people slide into my DMs, but nothing really. Whereas live on Saturdays, we have delightful conversation. Like there is constant conversation over the half an hour. People are engaged. Those people don't just engage with me, but they get engaged with each other. Mm, and so like they all now follow each other on Instagram. And like we've made our own little community of connection. Some of us have met in real life. Some of us haven't. And that is like, to me, just so cool. And so I really want to continue to foster that because like some of the people who I've met through Shart are friends of mine now. Like I'm now in a book club with one of the girls who I met via Shart. So now we're meeting monthly with a whole other group of people Mm -hmm. to talk about awesome books. And how cool is that, that this one area spawned another. And like, you just never know to me, that's the beauty of authentic connection through community is that you Mm -hmm. you never know what seeds are being planted and and that's like to me just being you don't need to plant deliberate seeds the deliberate is fostering authentic connection within your community and then seeds are just going to plant themselves like and you don't have to worry about it and so for me that that community is a big one and then there are lots of local artists who I've met, I love, they do cool shit. Like there's a pottery artist. She and I have talked about having like me painting her pottery. How cool would that be? Mm. And right, like how fun would that be? What a neat collaboration. I have I haven't painted pottery since I painted an ashtray in grade five in elementary school for my non-smoking parents. <laughs> like, <laughs> as you know, we all did. <laughs> as we all did. Oddest thing ever. Anyway. Um, and so, you know, I like, that's part of the experimentation, but that's also part of the community and connection and just leaving the house, seeing somebody else. Like I, there's people I've met on Instagram who literally I'm like, can we have a Instagram call? And can you take me on a tour of your studio? I want to see your tools. And like, you know, I've, I met somebody recently who makes, uh, like resin, printed resin sculptures Mm. and then airbrush paints them. So I was talking with him about airbrush, like just so people do such cool stuff. And, Mm -hmm. and when you step outside of yourself and are like, look at you, look how cool that is. Uh, Authentically interested, authentically wanting to connect with a person. Yeah. I think so much can come out of it. So that for me is like, that's a, that's a big one. The community one. It's a, it's a big one. And expanding that community really deliberately like I don't need to I don't need to blow up I don't need 10 million Instagram followers to sell my art um just need one person who thinks that's really awesome and and connects with me in some way that's what I need right that's what we all need Mm -hmm. so no absolutely it's so funny I was having a conversation with a client uh about a week ago who is this one of my email marketing clients and she's doing a a challenge this year with her list. Um, Oh, cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's her first time doing this and she had done a lot of research on it and she just what she had written the emails. She just wanted me to go in and um, make them more fun, (laughs) make them more fun and, and, you know, you know, juju them up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And she wanted some, some graphics and printables and stuff to go with it. So, um, Anyway, I I had done some stuff and I had asked her how many people had signed up. I knew how big her list was. And she told me the number and I read the number and I was like, oh my God, she did awesome. So to give you an idea, the kind of engagement you can expect on these things is is one to 2%. And she was hovering, I think around three. I can't remember now. Um, So she had done really well. Yeah. But she... I hadn't said anything to her yet. And the next line in her email was, I'm really disappointed. I feel like Uh. I failed my audience. And so I I emailed her back and I said, you have done so well. Like that is, that is, that's, that is a good number. Like, and we had a little conversation back and forth. And I said, look, 
here's what you've learned. You've learned that these people are your people, right? Yeah. These people who signed up, they are your people. Like they, they want to be involved with you. They want to do yeah. this with you. I said, that is priceless information and mm-hmm. you need to like tag those in your email list as, you know, yep. my people, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and she's since, she's since growing the, the lit, like, um, I think it just launched this week and she had, um, she had come close to, to doubling the number she had when we had this conversation. So she, she's wow. done super well with this, but she just, she didn't know what the numbers were or what to expect. And, and she thought she had, she hadn't done well at all, but yeah, she's, she's identified this group of people as, as hers. These are the ones who, yeah. who are, you know, and that is to know who those, who those people are is such amazing information because now you can really focus yes. on them and, and yeah. really serve them in a way um, that makes them loyal forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yes. And I think we forget yeah. about that. Um, we're always, I think sometimes we veer into that space where we become a mobile phone provider company where it's like, yes. yeah, yeah, I got all you who cares. Uh, I got to go out and get all these people, right? So, hey, all you people who are not subscribers, uh, I got a deal for you. All you people who are already subscribed, you just sit over there and be quiet, right? Like you're already here. (laughs) You know know how we feel in our phone company. It's it's irritating, right? It doesn't inspire loyalty. It doesn't make you like them, but you need a mobile phone. So you just suck it up and (laughs) deal with it, right? But it's not nice. Um, And so I think as creatives, we have to be very careful. We... We don't neglect the people who are in our community at the expense of trying to just draw everyone in, you know, we're never going to appeal to everyone. And um, yeah, so I, community is huge and we've done, we've done so many conversations on the show about building your community and, (laughs) and um, you know, community is not just about who you hang out with online. It is the people that you hang out with in person it's mm-hmm. your colleagues. It's yeah, it's not just customers, it's colleagues, it's other artists, it's other creatives, it's other professionals who might see a way to use the, your work in what they do. Um, somebody was asking me a few weeks ago about whether she should approach uh, local realtors in her area. She runs a subscription box and um, and I was like, yeah, local realtors are they their whole, Marketing yep. revolves around their local community. They want to be seen yes. as specialists in that community. So they go out of their way to promote other small businesses because it makes them more entrenched in their local community. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, I'm not saying we should oh, run it, out and work with realtors, but like, think about it like that. Like, who- Oh, honestly, I collaborate with a local realtor. Yeah. who in a, in addition to uh, having a number of Airbnb properties also does home staging so it's a realtor home staging mm-hmm. partnership and i rent what do they out need art. my paint they need art yes. they need art <laughs> and i rent i rent out art for a monthly fee um it gets display business cards are put in front of it at all of the houses it gets exposure and the best thing for me is when people are trolling realtor.ca and they see one of my paintings in a home staging photo <laughs> And I get a screen capture. I spied you on Realtor. Holy <laughs> shit. And I'm like, that's so cool. To me, that's so cool. Because it's yeah. like, not only your community, first off, recognized your work, saw you out in the wild, and reached out to you. Like, it's an opportunity for connection. But also, I made money on paintings that were just sitting. And I always said, if somebody buys it, I'm just going to, you know, pick it up, give you the rest of your money for the rest of the month, that, and then sell the painting. Like, it it makes money doing nothing, but yeah. It, like, yeah, I think, I think we anyway. we're always so busy looking for the big win. We forget that it's really all the, the small wins that add up. And it's like, yes. I mentioned this in, a, in an episode the other day, you know, there's this Tom Cochran song, um, where he talks about, um, life isn't big. It's mm. kind of small. It's made up of small moments all strung together. And if you don't look out, you miss it all. And I, yes. that has been like my motto forever. And I have to remind myself of it all the time is it's, it's, it's the little things that mm-hmm. add up. And I was having a conversation in a group that I'm in, um, that brought back a memory I had not thought of for years, but when I was very young, I was, 
I think I was 18 or 19. It was my first employer. Um, and he was, he was a pharmacist, um, and he owned the, I worked for a pharmacy chain. He owned the store that I worked in, but he was also basically an entrepreneur. He had other businesses Mm -hmm. and he did other things. And one day his bank manager was in the store and they were chatting in the pharmacy. And I went in because I needed something. And I just sort of stood there politely waiting for a break in the conversation. And, uh, he turned to me and he said, Melissa, I'm going to give you some advice. (laughs) I was like, okay. Um, Uh And and he said, you know, he's like, this is my bank manager. And he said, you know, I've had a lot of businesses in my life. And he said, my goal is always to have them break even by year five. And by year seven, they should be turning a good profit. And his bank manager was nodding very emphatically, like, yes, yes, that's what we look for too kind of thing. And I I was like, okay, cool. You know, I need some lottery tickets out of the safe. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I forgot about it, but I was thinking about it because you see all these gurus out there now selling you the secret that to, to, you take my course and your business will be six figures in a year kind of thing. And it just, I don't know, so, something about this conversation shot me back to that memory. And I was like, you know, if I look at all the businesses I've run over the years, his formula was bang on. It yep. takes five years yes. to get to a point where you are in the black. And it takes yep. a few more years after that to get to a point where, um, you know, the, the black is filling your yeah. wallet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, 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 Yes, there's exceptions to that. Yes, there is the odd person who gets there in a year. But you know what? That's like being the Beatles. Most of us are not the Beatles. We're just the- And honestly, <laughs> I see I see those like grow your business, do this. Uh, those to me are like, like the National Enquirer diet plans. There are the things that say, well, she lost 57 pounds in three weeks just doing blah. And it's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't think so. I've noticed and like, it's like an exercise regimen. Like you have to stick with it. You have to, and things, things take time. Yeah. Things take time. Yeah. I've noticed a few conversations on threads lately where um, a lot of creatives are calling out all these people who, who help people with their art business because they've had a yes. successful art business. And, and somebody said something that I had noticed a few months ago, like, have you ever noticed that these people never show where they make this imaginary art that they got rich yes. off of? And it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, like I was looking at one the other day, she's got 10 print on demand Etsy shops and she makes this, she's had this many sales this year, but she never lists what the Etsy shops are. Like, I want to go see yes. what you made, what makes you yep. the expert? Because most of the time they, they're not. They're not actually nope. walking the walk. They they're just trying nope. to sell you something. It's become almost like a pyramid scheme, you know. <laughs> Honestly, yes, and it's like the the snake oil salesman, the pyramid scheme. It's the and you know it's interesting. Like I I think it was on Netflix. Anyway, it was on one of the streaming services, but it was the story of Lulu Lulu Larue. Oh yeah, yeah. Lulu, I think that's on Lulu Amazon Lulu Prime. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's and that's it was, a good you one. Know, <laughs> a, a total pyramid scheme, mm-hmm. and it really is like it. Te- I. I think particularly like the the Etsy marketplaces, the they really, it's like the olden day, like you can be an Avon lady and work for home and still take care of your kids and make the money and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I think that we've, we've glamorized the side hustle culture so much that everybody seems to, if you don't have like a $30,000 a year side hustle gig that you're not successful but you Mm -hmm. like first off nobody needs a side hustle you don't have to have one if you don't want one uh you can just make stuff to make stuff yeah uh that's okay too right (laughs) and like it doesn't have to be a business just because you like painting mugs it doesn't Mm -hmm. have to be a business and it and even if you do make it a side hustle like it doesn't need to be the million dollar like unless that's your goal and I think that's the thing a lot of people feel the pressure to do it because that's what we're supposed to do, air quotes, but not because it's their like actual goal. Yeah. Like they yeah. really, y- yeah, it, it's almost like a mindless creation process. And I, I, I really rebel against that. 
Yeah. I really I, read that. Like I, get, I get very frustrated when I, my feed gets inundated with people telling me how to run my, like, I'll sell you a course yes. to show you how to run your Etsy shop. It's like, but where is your Etsy shop? Like, I'd, I want to see, you know? Yes. Um, and that's not to say, you know, we've talked about this on the show before, like that you can teach as a revenue stream. You absolutely can. Oh my God. Yes. Right. Like that's, we're not saying you can't teach or you can't run courses, but um, we're, we're talking about the roof the has to be there though. <laughs> yes. We have to, we're talking about these sketchy people who you never actually see their art or, the, yeah. or what it is that they create. They're just telling you that they have a yeah. solution and usually it's something social, you know, how to be great on social media, which anyway, we could go off on a whole rant on that. Oh but, my God. Right. <laughs> but, you know, so we were talking about community and we got here and I'm mm. not sure how we got there, but anyway, <laughs> um, well, just off the, Authentic community, right? And like building it meaningfully yes, and not step having by to step worry about slowly. Yeah. Yes. And it does take time and it, it can be tedious mm-hmm. at times, but um, that's how you build a solid business yeah. that your bank manager will look at and go, yes, you've got a track record of steady improvement and you are now functioning profitably and you are on the path to yeah. not only pu- functioning profitably, but being able to support yourself Yes. you know, and, and whatever other endeavors you want to, to make happen. Exactly. Um, and I think it was a good reminder for me because, you know, I, I've talked about this before, having sold a business that I had for 10 years, I, f- I forgot that the first five <laughs> years were yep. really hard and really slow because all you remember is when things got good. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you forget the slogging that went on behind that. And, you know, yep. how many musicians out there who, who've had great careers, if you talk to them, they remember those days where they were playing like these seedy little dives and yep. um, eating cold pizza in their van in the parking lot, you know? Um, exactly. Because it takes a while. It takes a while. It, but they were building exactly. a community around their music. Yep. Yeah. Yes. And you ha- and I think, you know, it's it, it's great if people see, I like I wish success on, on everybody. I wish mm-hmm. success on everybody. And it's great when people see success really, really quickly. But for me, I feel like I really enjoy the slog. And, and I think that there's opportunity in the slog and in taking your time, you can, you can change course, you can realign, you mm-hmm. can look at those numbers and say, what am I going to do this week to, to focus on my goals? And that. You know, I think if things are moving too quickly and we talked about it in the, the episode where we talked about what happens if things, if you go viral, like when things speed out of control, you, you almost don't have time to sit down and think, what do I want? What do I want my business to look yeah. like? What do I want this to look like in my community? How, you know, how does this, when things just steamroll, you're like, okay, that's great. That's great. That's great. And then the next thing you know, you've signed all your rights away and you're uh, very upset about things. Like who knows what could happen, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think, um, yeah, when, when you, there's always that initial panic and need, you know, need to hurry when Mm. you are not earning enough to pay your bills. That's a very frightening situation to be in. Um, and so you always want things to move faster when you're Mm -hmm. in that space. Um, and I get that because that's where I've been the last oh, God, two yeah. years. And and now I, you know, this year I, I hit a number where, uh, I'm, I'm, I s- still would not be considered a middle-class wage earner or anything like that, but at least I know that there's enough coming in every month to mm-hmm. pay the bare minimum of my bills. Like, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. once that happens, it is nice to be able to, 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 take a breath and now enjoy the yep. process. Um, and yes. I feel like I'm enjoying the process a lot more this year and towards the end of last year than I was the first 18, 20 months of, of being full-time with this. And now it's like, okay. Yeah. Um, and so I, that was another one of my kind of goals this year was going, sticking with basics and, and going mm-hmm. back to my marketing roots and doing old school stuff that I know works. It's yes. not glamorous, but yes. it works. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think community, I think collaboration is a part mm-hmm. of community, you know? Um, yes. So, so for sure. Any, what else are you seeing this year? You know, I mean, one of the things that I'm, and I think 
and maybe it's just because of what I'm interested in, but I see an an even greater increase in, and I guess authenticity fits into it, but actual transparency. So like where, what is your Etsy shop? What is the transparency? Like, give me the link backs, try, like show me the proof in the pudding, mm -hmm. but also proof in the pudding on. So if you say they're sustainably made, what does that mean? Explain that to me clearly. Mm. If you say that you do X, what does that mean? Explain it to me clearly. And so I don't want, I don't want to be uh, like marketing jargon. I don't want, if, if I am saying something, I think that's part of it is I want, like, I know how much waste created my studio. It really bothers me mm -hmm. as part of my experimentation. How do I get that waste? But I also can't, I don't know. It's a really interesting thing. So for me, it's like that transparency on all the things, where you get your supplies, how you source them, how you're shipping things out, even pricing structures and understanding, like, I don't want anybody to feel like I am uh, a big bad wolf trying to take somebody's money. I don't want anybody to feel like I'm deceitful or not what I say I am. And so it sort of feeds into that community connection, authenticity, but it also really, to me, is like, it's a the purest form of transparency and, mm -hmm. and wanting to be accountable for that transparency, I think also, right? So if I say something sustainable, green, local, if I use it, those words, what do I mean by that? How can I trace that back? And if I make a mistake, I really want somebody to call me on it. <laughs> and I want to be able to hold myself accountable. And, and I want my audience to feel like they can hold me accountable. Like I want that community connection to be strong enough for somebody to say, uh, Heather, when you say local, you say this, but I call bullshit because yeah. I saw you whatever, whatever, or I heard that you like... I want them to be able to say that to me. And I think if they know that I'm open to that as part of that connection and that we've built, to me, it'll be so much more meaning, meaningful. And mm -hmm. Yeah. So to me, it's like that transpa that transparency thing is a, is a big one. And I have it written down as transparency, authenticity, and, ge and actual genuine connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So that, that's a and I'm seeing it like I follow a lot of people who talk about fair clothing, where they source clothing, all the micro microplastic are, you know, in our clothing. Uh, I did for 2022 and I did it, I'd say 70% of 2023. I had a, nothing new for 2022 was my rule. So I bought no new to me clothing, shoes, or accessories. Uh, underwear being an exception to that rule. Mm -hmm. Um uh, that's just a personal choice. I'm not that, slamming. That's for an sure. acceptable for exception. Underwear. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but it was nothing new to like nothing new for 2022. I continued that through 2023. I did buy some new things because I did start a new corporate job and I needed like there's only so much you can find at your local value village uh, and consignment shops. Uh, and so, but I've continued that because I'm really, I'm really, really, really concentrating more on being del a deliberate about my purchases much more deliberate about my purchases, much more deliberate about the source of my purchases. Uh, and if I'm doing that, I would kind of expect people to do the same when they're purchasing from me. And so mm -hmm. that's where that's come full circle is if I'm expecting it of others, I should expect it of myself. And so what waste do I create? How do I portray myself as an artist, maker, creator? Uh, yeah, so that's a, that's a big one for me that I, and I see it because I see it in my interests, like what I appeals to me. Uh, and then I sort of dwell on it and I'm like, oh, okay. How does that impact me, my life, my art, my creation? Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. I have seen so many people doing uh, no shopping 2024s this year. Like it, yeah. that, um, people really do seem to be it, it's definitely a trend that I have seen. Yeah. I don't know if other people are seeing this or if it's just, again, because of who I follow or, or whatever, but... No, I'm seeing it. Yeah, and even a, a, a girlfriend of mine who's not really on social media mentioned to me the other day that she's not... She's doing a no shopping 
January, I think. I don't think she's doing the whole year, but right. um, so yes, people are, um, and there's all different variations on how you do a challenge like that, totally. but um, yep. yeah, it definitely seems to be something that people are um, part of. And so transparency, I think is, is huge because mm. one of the things I'm going to bring up here at the risk of being controversial. And it's actually, I don't think it's a trend. It's not a trend. It's here to stay. It's a change in technology. Mm. Um, and that is mm. AI. AI. Yes. Right. And I have wanted to do an episode on AI for so long, but finding a good person to talk to has been a challenge. But the other challenge with AI and doing an episode on it is it is moving so fast right now that I feel yep. like if I had done an episode last week, it would already be out of date this week. Yes. So it's yes. just a, uh, <clears throat> such a fast moving thing. And mm -hmm. the reason I wanted to bring it up is because it's not going anywhere. It's here. Yeah. It's staying. Correct. And you, if you don't like it, that's fine. But it's like saying a hundred years ago, I don't like electricity. <laughs> you know? Right. Cool. Yes. You don't like it. Don't have it, but it's here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's here. <laughs> um, and it's been making me think a lot about, so if you listen, you know that I loved Downton Abbey. Um, and if you think back to the very first season of Downton Abbey, all the changes that were happening, like in the first episode, I think it started in 1912. Um, yeah, when the telephone and the telephone came in. Well, the very first episode was Lady Grantham complaining, like old Lady Grantham complaining about the electricity in the in the library, like, yeah, ah, the glare, you know, and they were all worried yep. about electrical vapors and they weren't going to have it in the bedroom because of the vapors coming out of the, <laughs> the walls vapors. And, and why would you even bother in the kitchen like they don't need it down there kind of thing right but then you also had like the car coming in people were just starting to drive I mean there's a scene where Lord Grantham is like oh don't drive into town there's too many people last I was there the other day and there was like five cars on the street you know right <laughs> so, and then the telephone and then uh huge advances in medicine with world war ii and and stuff like that like it was a massive period of change and it really impacted uh the the class structure in europe mm. at the same time right and so that's but you know what like you either adapted it adopted it or you didn't and if yeah. you didn't you fell behind and you yeah. wound up being like those people who lost their estates because they mm -hmm. were not willing to modernize yes. so yeah AI is here to stay. And whether you choose to use it or not, um, you need to understand how it works. You need yes. to understand what it can do. Um, and you need to be aware of it and informed. I don't think artists, well, first of all, I think most artists already use AI, whether they care to admit it or not. If you use Photoshop, mm -hmm. if you use Canva, you've been using yep. AI for using a long AI. time. <laughs> yep. That's what it is. Um, yes. So to say that you don't use AI, I think... It, you, you need to be very careful when you make that statement mm -hmm. because you probably are using it in some form. Yeah. Um, do you need to use it to create art? No, you don't. And I do think um, that like one of the things I've noticed with AI generated art um, is that to me, I can, t I can, I can almost always tell when it's been generated by AI. Yes. Yep. And, there, and somebody mentioned it in a comment um on an artist that I follow she did a series of AI paintings mm -hmm. and then she created photos using Dolly I think um okay. which is a is a photo AI photo generator <laughs> yep. where she took the AI generated art and then created like a flat lay for her Instagram with the art in the middle. I'll send you the link to it. I'll um yeah, find it. But and if I find it, I'll put it in the show notes. Anyway, she was very upfront. This is AI generated art. Like yep. this is what yep. I did. Um and the comments, one person commented and she put into words exactly how I feel about it. She's like, it's beautiful, but it's also really creepy. And right. if you ever look at AI generated art, like that kind of sums it up. There's something just a wee bit off about it. Yes. And I think part of it is it doesn't have a soul. Yes. You know, and that's yes. where artists excel. We put a piece of our soul into our work. And I was talking about this with a friend um, maybe six or seven months ago. There was a period where everybody went through and generated LinkedIn headshots of themselves using yes. AI. Do you yep. remember that? And so people would yes. post all the pictures. Which one do you like best? And yeah. um, a friend of mine posted hers and I said, 
these are, this is like, it was really cool, but none of them looked like her. And I think I was yep. one of the few people who commented on the post who had actually met her in person. And I said, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because I've met you in person, but the, there's no life in yep. these pictures. Like, and she's yes. like, she's like, exactly. She's like, they're really yeah. cool, but I don't think I can use them because I look like I don't have a soul. <laughs> yeah. And I think that is where the opportunity for art, and this goes hand in hand with your trend on transparency. This is mm -hmm. where, uh, as more traditional, I think people are going to get to a point where they're going to value more traditionally created, hand created art. Yes. Yes. Because they know who created it. They know the work that went into it and they know it wasn't made by a machine. Yes. And so being transparent about how you make your art, showing the behind the scenes, talking about what it means when you say that you use locally sourced materials or mm -hmm. that, you know, all of that goes a long way to showing that you're human. And I think I follow a number of creatives who are very big on AI, really mm -hmm. pro AI, but at the same time, they've been very clear that for them, the key to using it in their creative practice is to use it as a tool that tool. allows them to double down yes. on being human. Yes. And I yes. thought that's a perfect way to summarize it. It's a, a, a 100%. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, and I, yes. I noticed I've started publishing some blank notebooks on Amazon through Amazon mm -hmm. KDP. And I noticed that now I have to check off a box stating whether or not I used any AI tools in the creation in of creation. this book. And I think that's interesting. I think you're going to start to see that kind of um, disclosure where you're going to see that kind disclosure. of disclosure yes. appear on uh, books. You know, I follow yep. Joanna Penn from the Creative Pen. She has a fantastic podcast on writing and being an author, fiction, nonfiction. Mm -hmm. She's a huge proponent of AI. She calls herself an AI-assisted author. Yeah. But um, she's talked about how she uses it. She still writes. Yeah. Um, but she said, now because I have something that's helping me with the more mundane parts of my work, I yes. am able to, like, she launched her first Kickstarter last year where she created beautiful hand-bound special editions of some of her books um, and stuff like that. She's like, it's freed me up to do these really big, juicy, creative, hands-on yes. projects that I could not have done otherwise um, yes. because she's, she's, you know, bearing down hard on showing the human part of the artist mm -hmm. on creating things that are uh, beautiful, handcrafted, because that's, what people will treasure if yes if, once you have a system where you can spew out content or art or anything on a mass scale it loses what makes it special um and, Ab and, absolutely so what we do absolutely. becomes even more special right mm -hmm. so yes that's, that's that's how i feel about ai is you know what Use it as a tool in your business. Use it to help mm -hmm. you streamline the things you don't like doing. Yes. Use it to help you brainstorm. <laughs> we were talking about it the other day in my mastermind group and just for fun, because I've always wanted to write a mystery novel. I typed into chat GPT, like I, I gave it what I wanted as a plot. And I said, you know, yeah. like, tell me I want it to take place in this era. And I want it to be like about yeah. this. And, and so it spewed out a very detailed mystery plot, but it didn't tell me who killed, who the murderer <laughs> <laughs> so oh my god that's amazing I still have to figure out who did it <laughs> so um I, I probably that's need amazing. to prompt it better but I thought that was hilarious right. it's like you know and that's I mean I think that that I use AI all the time uh in my my freelance like PR communications work and also in my uh contract work I use it all the time mm -hmm. it is a tool that allows me to do my job more efficiently I save time. What you put in is what you get out. So your prompt, yes. like you still have to have a quality prompt. You still have to, it, you know, shit in, shit out, seriously. So like you put shit in, shit's going to come back out. It's what you get. It's what you put in. Um, and I use it for art experimentation all the time too, only to, it's like part of the play process for me. Yes. And also, yes. and also understanding I did, I did, <laughs> A girlfriend of mine had a birthday last year uh, and for her birthday, I 
painted her a painting for her dining room. She uh, newly single and also has backyard chickens. And I decided to to sort of celebrate both of those things. Chickens and paint are a big her. trend this year. Just to, chickens to, are to, a big trend. Jacked, yes. And so <laughs> I decided to paint a paint a painting for her that was just sort of really cheeky. Um, and so I typed in to a variety of uh, art AI generators. The the prompt was uh, male phallus dressed, uh, sorry, my exact prompt was an uncircumcised male phallus dressed as a chicken. And every single one of the uh, art AI de developers said that it's against their terms of use because it's pornographic. And immediately, I will tell you categorically, part of my experimentation is going to be filling that niche because if AI cannot create pornographic art, I might have found my niche. Anyway, so I painted her a painting called cock a doodle do um and it was a, a a cock uh dressed as a chicken in a beautiful field of flowers and it hangs in her dining room and um it's hysterical and it was very funny but that to me i'm like there are things that ai cannot do there are things that only us as humans can do and my only caution with AI is really understand what that means for your individual rights as an artist. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to be using, and I, like we're, this is not an episode on AI, but I've done a lot of research on it. If you are using AI for your artwork or inputting any artwork of your original creation into AI uh, creation or tools, really understand what that means for your rights and ownership on that work because if you are sacrificing that simply to experiment you need to really understand what that is is worth to you yeah That's and you also cost. need to understand if you're using things that are generated by AI, by AI you need to understand Correct. that 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 they that AI has been trained on other people's work yes so and and there's there are a lot of lawsuits going on surrounding mm -hmm. the rights and things behind that and um, whether or not that falls under fair use and a whole bunch of things. Mm -hmm. And this is this like any new technology, the the legal ramifications and the government regulation of it are always behind, but they are yes. coming. They, they are yep. coming along yes. um, and those things are being worked on in the background and you can absolutely go learn more about that and you should mm -hmm. learn more about it. You should yes. understand what's going on with all of that. Um, and there's even some interesting revenue generating models that are mm -hmm. starting to appear where where um some of these tools are now starting to collaborate with right. other, um with journalists uh artists writers and things and um there is there's potential there for revenue streams that could even mm -hmm. be better like in in the case of a blogger if you allow your work to be used to train ai you could license like it becomes a licensing agreement so you you would start right. to earn revenue from that that could potentially uh, outperform your ad revenue so you know mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of possibilities here we're just barely scratching the surface yeah and there's a lot that needs to be sorted out but um you know, think carefully about how you yeah. want to use it and uh, know what your boundaries are going to be around, yep. around it. Yep. Do what you can to understand the legal ramifications of it. And again, these are going to change as, yes. as things catch up. I mentioned mm -hmm. Joanna Penn. Um, she has this podcast called The Creative Pen. She is been talking about AI probably for four or five years now. And she's wow. usually very bang on with her, her predictions and where she sees mm -hmm. things going. And um, she's been very informative for me when I listen to her in terms of like, um, and she fully admits it. She's like, AI freaks me out too, but it also right. really excites me. And I think that's yes. pretty normal with any new technology. Yep. It's scary. Like those electricity vapors run around here. <laughs> <laughs> and we had the same thing when when the internet came in, like, oh, totally. there's all these things, all these um yep. these, these things running around our house and and yeah. <laughs> you know, it's scary. But I rem um, I remember in the eighties, don't stand in front of the microwave. Oh, don't yeah, stand in front of the microwave down. when you're heating don't up your stand stuff. too close to the television like all right. those anytime there's been new technology <laughs> just don't get too close to it and right? it, you know what that's that's i think that's a very normal human thing but you know what else is a very normal human thing mm. it's baked into our dna is 
wanting to tell stories and wanting to create. We are wired that way. I don't, I don't care if you think you're creative or not. If you're listening to this podcast, you probably think you're creative because you are creative because we are all creative. It's just how that creativity manifests itself is Mm -hmm. different for everyone. And so, you know, it's baked in. AI isn't going to stop us from wanting to create. It's not going to stop us from wanting to tell stories. It's going to change how we create and how we tell stories, but it's not going to take away that deeply human need to totally. if anything, it's going to free up our time to create more, more. And, and that's, I honestly, I see that, that like this ties back to my goal for 2024 of experimentation. But mm-hmm. one of the things that I experimented with in 2023, when I was going through the creation process of the exhibition was using a projector. So instead of sketching out um, and spending hours, you know, making sure I was getting the proportions right and putting my grid on my canvas and sketching things out Mm -hmm. and translating things from my original teeny tiny sketch to my big canvas. Now I drew my sketch on my iPad. I transferred that image and projected it onto my canvas. It is still me. It is still my work, but I found a tool, a technological Mm -hmm. tool combining my iPad and a projector that allowed me to save literally hours per canvas. And it's still my art, but I used technology and experimenting with technology to just do more in less, with less, I would say. Uh, And so, you know, that to me is like a perfect example of there's tools and technologies out there that can enable you to be a more profitable artist. So like if I can cut the time that it takes me to paint a painting in half from 10 hours to five hours, I've quite literally just doubled my profit opportunity because I can now make another painting in those five hours. Like, or you can do like, so I can do other things. (laughs) I can see Heather right now and I can see her studio and she's prepping for her, her, uh, studio open house this weekend Mm -hmm. so she's got all her paintings in the background and we were talking before we came on the episode she's got um this one painting of the pair of jeans the paint splattered jeans Mm -hmm. and it's in this incredible frame that she has painted to go um that she's painted to go with this this um painting oh my goodness my brain (laughs) (laughs) this is this is a very big podcast recording day for me so i'm i'm losing my words here but right Anyway, uh, so now she had time to spend creating this incredible frame for this painting that is something that um, she might not have been able to do otherwise yes. because she would have been pressed for time. So she's yep. taken this whole creation to another level um, mm-hmm. in a way that um, she might not have been able to do otherwise. And so that's, you know, like like Joanna doing this special edition book that's hand bound Mm -hmm. with gilt edges and beautiful plate photography, you know, plated illustrations in the book and things like that. Like something, somebody will treasure forever that instead of downloading an an ebook off of Amazon of this book, right? Like there's a big difference and there's a place for both of them. Oh, totally. And in terms of even the transparency, like I shared stories and reels of using my projector and Mm -hmm. showing me tracing my own image to be completely transparent and totally authentic with my audience on my creation process, but also to invite, I feel this is like the perfect circle back, but like it's that authenticity, transparency, but also really inviting the community in behind the scenes. Look how I made Look how I'm making my art. And I hope that people actually appreciate the art more because they've they've got that insight. It's not just, ta-da, finished piece. Mm-hmm. It's like, look, you saw me slog over it. You saw the things that I did yeah. to make this awesome happen. And and I, for me, that's to bring it right back. That's what 2024 is going to be all about, is letting people in, opening the door, trying new things, and just seeing what happens. And yeah. And, Show the humanity behind your work. Yes. Yes. I know a a, a while back I was talking with a friend and she sent me an article about this guy who's talking about how he can generate thousands of blog posts in, in a week um, and post them to his website and get ad revenue from that and everything. And it's like, and she was like, like, this is what it's coming to. And I, you know, it's like, 
nobody gives a crap about this guy nope. and his thousand crappy articles on nope. his website. Like nobody cares. He's not contributing anything new or interesting to the conversation. Yep. He's just adding to all the junk and yep. mediocrity that's already out there. Our job is to use these tools to elevate our yes. work and create things yeah. that nobody else is doing and to let our creativity shine. I mean, yes. how many of us use Procreate? Procreate is just an AI Love it. Program. Love it. <laughs> it Love is. it. You can't yep. draw a perfect circle on your own. Procreate, you can draw a perfect circle. That's AI. I make mean, you know, yes. but and yet you look at a lot of the digital art that's out there, and it is all very similar because we have these tools to to bake perfection in. Yeah. But, Human art done with our hands is never perfect because we're not capable of yes. drawing a perfect circle or a perfectly nope. straight line. We can't do that. Um, and But it's those quirks, those human quirks that are what makes our art so appealing mm -hmm. and what gives us our style because I might not be able to draw a very good, I can't draw a very good circle on my own. Heather might be able to draw a circle much better than I can, but her circle is going to look different from my circle. Yeah. Yeah. We're two different people. But if yep. we draw a circle on Procreate, our circles are going to look the same. You know? I, I'll tell you, I did an experiment and it's funny. I was just thinking of it because of course I can see in the, in the background behind me, obviously staring at Melissa on Zoom, I can see a, one of my paintings is a confetti. Uh, anybody who follows me on Instagram will be very familiar with my confetti style paintings. Yeah. And I, that is done by using a very specific and deliberate brush stroke over and 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 over again. And I have one specific brush earmarked, it's taped because it's the perfect brush for that, but it is, it's the tool and it's me, but it's a hundred percent human. And then one night I thought to myself, man, this would be really fun. So I popped into Procreate and just with my iPad and my, you know, Apple pencil, I tried I was essentially creating a digital uh, confetti piece. Mm -hmm. It looked pretty, like it was pretty, mm -hmm. but it didn't, it, to, exactly to your point, there, there was, a, off. first off, it really was off. There was no, and like, it's just little squares on a canvas. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I have painted this touching scene. Like, it's not like, but there is, there's feeling in that. The feeling on my screen was nada. It was like, oh, those are pretty colors, but whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was so interesting to me to basically Aesthetic try and to it is and try, like <laughs> re exactly recreating <laughs> something digitally, losing and even though it was still me creating it, mm -hmm. it something it's was been, lost in translation. Yeah, it's it's been. I, I don't even know what the exact word would be for it, but it's kind of softened. It's yeah. new, but softened or it was weird. Uh, like it, it is, it's just a little bit. Off. It was just off. Yeah. And it's not to say you can't have a digital style that, that's still oh, Christ yours. No. Yes. But it's, it is. It's so tempting to use the tools to make things perfect that didn't yes. need to be perfect. And that does take Correct. away from the uniqueness of your style. Um, yeah. It's sort of like if we all try to dress like Audrey Hepburn right yeah not really it's not our style it's Audrey Hepburn's no. style we're just copying it. copying yes <laughs> um, so you have to figure out how to bring your humanity into it and so maybe that means generating the like the beginnings of the work with yes you know, create and then taking that work and adding on something with markers or paint or like more mixed media style yeah art. yes um and things like that or or using it as a way to collage or like I think there's so many possibilities with it totally and and I do totally. think that if you don't want to use it don't use it but you can use AI to help you with the business side of your oh. of your business so whether God, you're yes. writing subject lines for your email newsletters or helping you with product descriptions and things like that but even that like um I've used Shopify a few times to write AI, AI tool to use. I've used Shopify's AI tool to write product mm -hmm. descriptions for me. And I write newsletters for a living. I've even tried generating newsletter content, but I have never, ever published anything without me, the human going in and oh, tweaking it because it's 100%. never quite, nope. like we said, never quite right. It's always a little mm -hmm. off. It does it. 
um, another writer friend pointed out to me, like a sure dead giveaway that is AI is AI never uses the same word twice. Humans use the same words over and over again all the, all the time. time. Yep. Um, and so that's a sure fire sign. AI descriptions and copy tend to be almost overly flowery because yes. it's trying to use so many, like use all the yes. words. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, but, but to be able to generate that first draft really quickly huh. is yes. so many. I did it so for, for mural pitches. I mm -hmm. typed into chat GPT yeah. and said, what are the benefits of having a mural in a veterinary clinic? And then mm -hmm. they pulled up all these points. And I then I copied and pasted it. outlines. Yeah. yeah. And I honestly, I, it saved so much time. And even in art experiment, <laughs> excuse me, experimentation, like I'd have to start taking acid or something to see some of the things that AI art generators generate for me in terms of like, I have crazy ideas. And so I put the prompts in and see what they pull up and, and those random things that are a creation of my own mind, the visual that then is handed to me, I'm like, ooh, that's interesting. And I don't, as I said, like I'd have to start dropping acid to see <laughs> those weird things like in my own brain. Do you know what I mean? Like it would just mm. be such an odd, whereas now I feel like I can get to that point of experimentation so much quicker. And so it'll well, for me, it facilitates me being me in a more efficient way, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. How how different is AI from say, like, you know, the Beatles have talked quite openly about um their use of LSD and things like that, particularly yep. I think on the Strawberry Fields. Yes. Um and, and the White Album, I believe. Um it's been a while, but I think I think it, those were two. But how different is them taking a mind altering substance from somebody using totally. AI? Right. They, they didn't come up with that on their own. They took, they put something into their body. Yes. That helped them yes. generate. Unlock, that. unlock yeah. things. And that's, I think that's the key is like, yeah, don't I'm use not it recommending to do the all thing. go out and use LSD no, or anything exactly. like that. But I'm no, saying, no. like, is it that different? I don't know. I don't know. And that's it, exactly. And I'm with you. I think it, using these tools to unlock more of you is the key to it. Not mm -hmm. using the tools to create something you're still creating the something but mm -hmm. and that like I, I plan on experimenting with AI more this year that's part of my experimentation sort of wish list um and I'm yeah like I'm I just you just need to understand your rights anyway but I think like 2024 rights. is going to be a kind of it's cool. going to be a very interesting year to see how people do use this yes there will be people who abuse it um, yes, because that's just what happens. There's there, humans there will that always, always have yep. to do that. There are going to be people who use it to, like you said, really unlock their creativity and, mm -hmm. and probably embark on new periods yeah. of their career that are extremely productive and creative. Yeah. There's going to be others who are like, I'm not touching it with a 10 foot pole. Yep. You know, okay. Um, doesn't mean you it's do you. not go anywhere. It's still <laughs> exactly, here. but yes, that's, that's up to you. That's your decision. There's going to be yeah. others who are like, it's cool to fool around with, but I really just like painting watercolors. Yep. Um, but you know what? I am going to use it to write subject lines for my, because now sure. if it writes the subject lines, I might actually send a newsletter out every week instead of once every four yep. months. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, exactly. Which is, which is good. So yep. I think be cautious, but be curious. I think that's, mm. I think that's a good model for life. Be cautious, but be yeah. curious. And yes. um, it's okay to be freaked out by it because mm -hmm. there are, it, you know, some creepy stuff, uh, oh. but I think there's also opportunities with it. Uh, I saw, yeah. I think Strathmore, I want to say it was Strathmore, the paper company. Um, yeah. I may have the brand wrong, but one of the brands that I, art, art supply brands that I follow yeah. on the internet did a really cool, um, a campaign where because one of the things that AI is not good at generating is the human hand images yes. of the human hand they're all very I am also not good at recreating the <laughs> human <laughs> hand the human hand is very hard to draw <laughs> so they invited a bunch of artists to incorporate the human hand into a piece of their work and showing and and the tagline was the future of art is in good hands it was oh. very something like that but it was very cheeky and well done and they mm -hmm. showed this, these incredible creations that these artists made and they showed them making like amazing yeah sure it was on strathmore paper or whatever but um i have to look and make sure i have the brand right but 
Uh, and I just thought that is a genius campaign. Yes. It is just showing yes. like, yes, AI is here, but you know what? We still need our artists. We still need them creating things. And yeah, totally. they're going to do it on our paper. Like how cool yep. is that? <laughs> so yep. Write it all in very nicely. Oh yeah. And so, that, I mean, that was a beautiful collaboration too, right? That's the yeah. thing. Like we're seeing it more and more is like that true collaboration and understanding that there's benefits to that partnership yeah. and celebrating each other's contributions, I think mm -hmm. is a big one. Yeah. yeah. So whatever kind of art you produce or whatever you create, um, there's, there's always going to be a place for you. Um, mm -hmm. But I just, I feel like, yeah, it's AI is not a trend. It's just, it's here. It's, it's here. Yeah. Here. Yeah, exactly. We used to fax things and now we don't. And we scan our art. Yeah. You know, yep. um, we do all kinds of things yes. that we don't even think about that 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago would have been like, <gasps> You know. Honestly, like I just like literally just looking at the desk in front of me, there are two cell phones, mm -hmm. an iPad, a digital tool to accept mobile payments, a giant podcasting microphone, and two laptops in front of me. Yeah. Uh, Even it, that cell phone you have, what's on that cell phone? There's a camera on it. Oh, yeah. 30 years ago, people were freaking out over digital yes. cameras and how it was going to destroy photography and, nope. um, you know, anybody would be able to, yeah, it did. It opened up, it broke down a lot of barriers for a lot of people to enter into a medium that was incredibly yes. expensive yes. to, to participate in. And suddenly, and the digital camera suddenly became something that went into our phones. It was crappy at first. Now it's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, does that mean that anybody can be a photographer? No. Nope. Anyone can snap a photo, but not yes. anyone can be a photographer. <laughs> they're, they're two different things, right? Major it's, difference. I see a lot of crappy cell phone photos oh taken my on God. with a really good camera, but the Which photos- blows my mind, honestly, because I'm like, <laughs> dude, there are YouTube tutorials out there that tell you it's- it blo on Yeah, anyway- Yes, if I could go a, down the road. Totally. If you, if you, <laughs> I, I remember when Joe McNally did the first digital photography cover for National Geographic, and it was the Stealth Bomber, and people were like lost their minds. minds National yeah. Geographic has jumped the shark, you know. And <laughs> you know, Joe McNally is a brilliant photographer, and mm -hmm. there is no way. I don't care. You could give him and me the same freaking tool, yep. same camera in our hands, and he Correct. would take a better picture than me, like a thousand times better picture than me. I went to a Joe McNally um, workshop once, <gasps> and it was amazing. He he was here I'm in sure. Vancouver. He comes to Vancouver quite often, actually. Um, and he was he was getting people from the audience to come up, and he was taking these shots, and he had the he had his camera tethered to his computer. So the shot, as soon as he snapped the, the, the frame, it would go up on the screen. And I was looking at these images and I, and I know he does use Lightroom and things to polish them off. Um, but these images look like they had been put into Photoshop and made wow. even like, it was just like, and that was straight out of the camera. And I was like, Amazing. Oh, to be able to do that. Like, this is just a man who understands light yep. movement composition and he's been doing it for years and it doesn't matter what tool you give him. Yes. Um, and that's what we should all strive to, to be. Yes. To be yes. masters of our, our tools. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and that the tools enhance our human delivery mm -hmm. of what we were trying to express. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So yes. Um, yes, yes. AI is going to open doors for a lot of people who may not have participated in our world before, mm -hmm. But it's also, um, it's it's not going to take away from what we do. Yeah, no. Exactly. And I would say it's I would say it's a, a very clear opportunity to set yourself apart. Mm -hmm. Whether whether you use it a little bit, a lot, or not at all, whatever that is, it's that like sharing that story and process with your people, so that they know, so that there's no surprises, mm -hmm. and using it to set yourself apart, like the human yeah. element to set yourself exactly. apart. Exactly. Double down on being human. Be Totally. Don't be afraid to get in front of the camera and show who you are, show who the person behind the art is, totally. how you make the art, how you use the tools, what makes your work special, because all our work is special. Your work is special. Yes. My work is special. Um, and we're all unique. And this tool just gives you the opportunity to spend even more time. Yes. Doing being that. you. Being you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. So we got very passionate about that. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it honestly, it, in terms of 2024, like it is, it's not on the horizon. It's not a trend. It's, no, it's, here. Not, it's here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's only going to become more refined and big time and get better. And, um, I, I heard a doctor who was talking about, because they use AI tremendously in medicine, oh, uh, and, yeah. and emergency medicine and things like that. And he was saying, um, AI isn't going to get rid of clinicians. Um, he said, it's going to make better clinicians. Yes. It's like, if you take a clinician who doesn't use AI and you put them against one who does you use AI, the one using AI is going to be the yeah. better clinician because they've got better information, better data, better, yes. um, all of that at their fingertips. So, um, that's, that's the way to look at it. How can this make oh, me better? Time. Yes. Yeah. All right. Did we cover everything we wanted to cover here? I feel like I feel did. like I did. <laughs> yeah, me too. Some big there. stuff there. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna wrap up for for this week. Uh, it was good good to have you back, Heather. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that is that is it for this week. We'll put links to everything we talked about in the show notes, so you can all go check it out. But we'll be back in two more weeks with another brand new episode, and we'll talk to you all then. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for joining us for the And She Looked Up Creative Hour. If you're looking for links or resources mentioned in this episode, you can find detailed show notes on our website at andshelookedup.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for our newsletter for more business tips, profiles of inspiring Canadian creative women, and so much more. If you enjoyed this episode, Please be sure to subscribe to the show via your podcast app of choice so you never miss an episode. We always love to hear from you, so we'd love it if you'd leave us a review through iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Drop us a note via our website at anshelookedup.com or come say hi on Instagram at anshelookedup. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.